Hi, in this video we'll look at the relationship between torque and moment of inertia. You can see a shaft rotating with lots of gear teeth on it. Uh, it's a pretty heavy looking shaft. The first thing we have to do is to determine the axis of rotation. And that we will do now. We can see the yellow line, that's the axis of rotation. The moment of inertia as well as the angular acceleration happens around that axis. If you notice closely, the shaft was stationary, it accelerated for some time, maintained a constant velocity, and then it slows down to a standstill. If we draw a graph of angular velocity versus time, the blue graph represents the situation. Initially, the shaft speeds up from zero, and that's an acceleration phase. And then the shaft speed remains constant for some time, that's zero acceleration, and then the shaft slows down to a standstill, that's deceleration or braking. On the top, you can see an analogy between linear force and then the angular torque. A linear motion forces mass into acceleration. Here in angular motion, you substitute torque equal to moment of inertia into angular acceleration. This is another way of looking at it. Draw a graph of angular acceleration versus time. In the first phase, the angular acceleration is constant. Then it drops down to a zero acceleration in the second phase, followed by a negative angular acceleration in the third phase. Accordingly, the torque will be positive in the first phase, zero torque in the second phase, and a negative torque or braking in the third phase. The moment of inertia would depend upon the shape of the object and the axis of rotation. Let's take a flat disc or shaft as we saw for the gearbox. And for this axis of rotation passing through its center, an R being the radius till the outer periphery, the moment of inertia would be mR squared by 2. As equations, torque can be defined in two ways. One is force, the tangential force, into the radius of action. So at the outer periphery of a disk, the tangential force at the outer periphery into the radius from the center would be the torque. In terms of moment of inertia, torque is equal to the moment of inertia into the angular acceleration. No acceleration means no torque. In terms of vectors, it's important to understand that angular acceleration is a vector but moment of inertia is not a vector. So you can see there the representation that torque vector is equal to moment of inertia which is a scalar into angular acceleration which is a vector. Since torque vector acts along the axis of a spinning disk, therefore angular acceleration vector also acts along the axis of a spinning disk. Above you can see the representation of torque as a cross product of force and radius, where force and radius are along the plane of the spinning disk. I hope this was useful. Thanks and have a great day.